Number two, I think it's unrealistic for the reasons that I explained to Grace before, to expect every single person in the public sector to have an inflation uh, inflationary pay If that's pay the case, rise. you think that the current level of salary in the public sector is untenable because all it would be doing is be maintaining the level of salary in the public sector. The, the realities of inflation, because all we get told is we can't, that the sound bites mm. that we fight against here at, at Byline, right, is can't, inc um, can't increase uh, wages because that'll push up inflation. And so many people will stick there, sit yeah. there and go, oh, OK. Mm, and yeah. it's never fully... I, I think, think the, education is so important. The point that people really need to kind of get their heads around when it comes to inflation is that there's a real difference between what's going on with nominal prices, so just, like, the numbers that you see in front of you when you go and pay for something, yeah. and then, you know, real prices. So, effectively, the relative balance of incomes in the economy, right? So, mm. um, you know, whether that's wages versus profits or, or, you know, tax revenue or whatever. And even if you're seeing nominal prices go up a lot, so the numbers going up and up and up on the, um, you know, on the, the price stickers, um, then, you know, there's no reason that that should necessarily mean a shift in the balance between incomes in the rest of the economy. Mm -hmm. So if prices are going up across the economy in unison, so like wages are going up, profits are going up, and it's all happening at the same time, then you just end up with the same structure of the economy at a higher price level, right? So just add a couple of zeros on basically to everything and how it was before. The issue is, is that that's not what's, ha what's happening because workers are seeing their wages eroded because they're not seeing their wages go up with um, with prices, but corporations are putting prices up, mm. and their profits are going up with prices. Mm. So actually, what we're seeing is a kind of stealth redistribution yeah. that's coming under the guise of this change in nominal prices, and yeah. that's the yeah. problem. Well, yeah. But I think the yeah. issue the rich would are potentially richer. be though, if you were to say, right, let's give everyone a pay rise. I think that a lot of the corporations that you're talking about would say, well, we're not going to dent the profits. We'll put prices up even further to try and... Uh, it, which uh, is why you also need strategic sort of, price controls in yeah. certain sectors, because the only sectors that you can really do that in are the ones that are already not competitive enough. Yeah. So where there's corporate power or monopoly or oligopoly power. Um, and actually, those need to be regulated anyway. And when you look at this situation, Sam, what's sort of the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it about wages? You know, is it about price caps? Where, where are you at? I think debt is quite an interesting topic and one that's occupied Conservatives quite heavily during this leadership contest. And I find it deeply ironic that the two leadership con contenders are deeply concerned about debt, despite the fact that they're willing to write off a load of the money that we gave to businesses in COVID relief because they're about to go bust. Um, there's another point that people don't fully appreciate in the, the majority of COVID debt that we produced was bought by the Bank of England. Mm -hmm. So the government owes itself money so we can control that debt mm -hmm. really effectively, more so than, than ever before. And obviously we see this playing out in the public sector as well. Um, I was trying to research this morning how much schools would have to pay in their energy bills mm -hmm. this year. And Labour's put up some suggestion that it's going to be a billion pounds that schools are going to have to fork out for their energy bills. But the interesting thing is, talking about the balance of the economy, um, the, pa the tax breaks that are awarded, actively awarded by the government to private schools each year mm. is equivalent to £3 billion. So if we're talking about loopholes, we could directly close that loophole and help to fund uh, the energy costs of state schools immediately. Not to mention the tax cuts and subsidies that we give to fossil fuel companies. Yeah. yeah. I think what's really interesting is that this crisis that we're facing suddenly... To an extent, p people, you know, think they're very tribal, that they're, they're, I'm a Conservative or I am mm. Labour. And actually, suddenly, that goes out the window to an extent, because you're just like, oh, my God, I can't afford my gas bill. My pub's got a 60 grand gas bill, so I just don't want to pay that. And at that point, you know, wanging on about, I believe in growth and low taxes, or I believe in this, it's just like, no, no, what are you going to do? Mm. What are you going to do? Yeah. And to a certain extent, I don't care what you do. I just can't go under. Mm. And I feel that, to some degree, that that is sort of bringing people together in a way that we haven't been for a long time, so we've been in such a divided society, and suddenly there's just right and wrong, and we can't have kids going to school not being able to eat lunch, and mm. we can't let all these businesses go under. And then actually, the, the amount of sympathy for the strikes... So much more. Is, is, is People are like, no, actually, yeah, that doesn't make sense that a, a, that a junior barrister starts on 10 grand. Don't get me wrong. Do I think enough is being done? Mm. Absolutely not. Do I think it's appalling that... We have this power vacuum at the moment while we wait for the birth of our new Prime Minister. Absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Where I disagree is that, firstly, I don't feel that bringing Britain to a halt during 
a situation like this is particularly helpful or is going to get us in a particularly better direction, number one. Number two, I think it's unrealistic for the reasons that I explained to Grace before, to expect every single person in the public sector to have an inflation uh, uh, inflationary if, that, if that's pay the case, rise. then you think that the current level of salary in the public sector is untenable because all it would be doing would be maintaining the level of salary in the public sector. Well, I, I, I don't think that you because can Because people have... are already underpaid in the public sector. We've well, already had a long-term... I don't pay, think pay any freeze. industry at the moment... What I would be focusing on the targeted help that I spoke about before, which is uh, is bringing down. People are only angry because their energy bills are so high. People are only angry because they're paying They've money. They've been angry a lot. Yeah, a lot, a lot of things. But but, but if if you brought those things down and allow people to keep more of their own pocket, money in their own pocket, if you. Halved... But you're saying that you want you want to give people money and benefits rather than allowing them to organise in order to maintain their wages, which is their them, money. I want to give them more of their own money, and I want to give targeted help to those people who really. Really need it, who are but in but I, I their it, yeah. money is the the money that they are organising yeah. to demand from their bosses. They're not are they not striking for tax cuts? They're striking for pay rises. No, they're striking no, to maintain their wages. But, in yes. which, which they, but they're not going to be able to do that. I think that that's unrealistic to of be able to pay that. Why do you think it's unrealistic? Because it's not going to... Firstly, it's not going to come out of the profit. Secondly, Why? people suffer. But it always... Why won't it come out of profit? Yeah. Because it just won't. Right? Well, there's any legislation Why? that would say... It's the classic, like, you know, the world so you, is the way it is right now, so I can't possibly imagine so it ever being any that, other way. So you think that the companies are going to suddenly say, right, OK, we're going to take that's so much point. less yeah, money. That's the point. That's the point. That's the point. No, that's the point. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Historically, how do you think we got the weekend? How do you think we got minimum wage access? How do you think we got limited? It's workers from striking. No, it's not. It's workers coming together, striking and saying to their bosses, we demand wage increases. And if you don't give us wage increases, we're shutting down your mm, company, yeah. which means you're not going to make any profits either. It's workers saying to the government, we are coming together to shut down the country so that we can make sure that actually think, everyone in that country I, has I, a decent you're, you're, I know what you're saying, but I you think you're that, living in a no, fantasy I, world. I think if you we're think living... That, that, sorry, can I just say, I think you're living in a fantasy world if you think that these companies are going to say, right, we're going to tell all our shareholders for the next few years you're going to make less money and we're not going to pass that that those extra costs Maybe onto the consumers. And if it was the public sector... And if it was the public sector... And if it was the public sector... It will be our tax money. It's our money that's going to end up being given to those workers. That's the whole point of strikes. Is no. that you shut the company down so that they can't make profit if they don't pay your wages? Yes, they Gee, can't make profit, don't. but they're not going to take those pay rises out of their future profits. Well, they, what they will do the is they will pass it on to not, us. If their business can't work, they won't make any profit. Yeah, yeah that's the whole exactly. point. But they, they are not. But they are. They are striking for a pay rise. They're not saying we want that pay rise specifically. We're, we're not going to take the pay rise unless it comes out of profits. They'll take the pay rise but wherever no other it comes. Option. There's no other option. The yeah. company will be. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. And then how will the company then maintain its profits? And also. It won't. Be, that's the whole point. Yeah. Yes, because they'll put prices up. So therefore, no, but, uh, we I'm as sorry. consumers <laughs> will end up paying more for the very thing. No, no, yes. I feel like this is very obvious. A company's income yes. can be divided into, obviously, the amount that they're putting back into investment. Let's just say profits and wages. Yes. Yeah. If you increase wages, yes. then you have less profit. Yes. Yeah. So, so then, so then you look for. for a way to increase your no, profit, which means that people... People don't always have like that. Of people course they like do. No. Of course and, corporations and think like that. Need to change. Because if they put up prices, how would I mean, you like that? And how do you think that we've ended up in the situation that we're in now? Where what you're all basically of these com- saying is that we don't live in a free market economy and therefore there's no justification for capitalism. Because if what you're saying is true, that as soon as workers demand wage increases that mm. therefore reduce profits, corporations will automatically put up prices and they won't be penalised like, by the market for that, it implies we don't live in a free market system and companies can basically do whatever they want. Well, which the- is, uh, like, theoretically speaking, not true of capitalist well, societies. Well, think of the railway so companies at the moment. true in That's very right. concentrated industries That's where they should be regulated okay, anyway. Sam, jump in. No, you finish on the railway companies because I think it's an interesting model. No, if well, you're okay. Use it. No, yeah. no, it is because the 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 railways themselves are nationalised, but the actual train operating companies um, they're subsidised, but they set their fares, right? Mm. Right. Well, do you think that fares are not going to go up 
massively if we give a massive pay rise to people who work on the railways. The railways are a natural monopoly. There will come monopoly. a point people can't afford them because their wages are so low. You're kind of saying that we should all accept the way society is mm. and have no progression, no radical thought at all, and that all these workers who are making the profit, they create the profit, have to be like serfs and just go, oh, you barons keep taking all the money and I'll just go to work and I can't afford anything and I'll go back to my freezing cold house <laughs> and look at a book by candlelight because I can't at least it's not as bad as it was back in the, and my yeah. kids are going to go to school and I can't afford their shoes. I mean, because that's exactly what I think, because there's no done. middle ground at all. You know that's what, exactly they, what I think. Just before you go, that was a clip from a longer programme. And I hope you enjoyed this conversation. But if you want more, you can watch the full show by going to byline.tv forward slash join and becoming a member. If you do, not only will you be able to watch full episodes of The Table, as well as hours of extended content, you'll also get to talk to the producers of Byline TV and have direct input into shows like The Table in our producers' podcast. So become a member today and be a part of building a better media.